They come past the 550. Spin the knife led narrowly. Up running second here on the outside is Flying Missile as they come to the turn. A length and a half to Pat Scott Sass. A further length and a half away then is Lewa. He's gold behind those, followed then by Heavenly Waters. On the outside though, it's Flying Missile that hits the lead. They went to the 200. Pat Scott Sass and Lewa just getting cramped for room, trying to get through the opening. Down the outside, Export Man is coming with a burst. Export Man, Lewa, Pat Scott Sass. Here's a ding dong go in the Karakata. They hit it on its tight, Export Man. Welcome to the Western Mail Racing Podcast. On the show, we discuss all things Perth racing and preview the Saturday Metro meeting. We'll also be interviewing industry participants, but first, it's over to Mike Johnson to get us underway. Yes, g'day. Welcome back to another episode of the Western Mail, episode 65 this week, with a huge meeting on the cards this Saturday. Uh, we're at the culmination of the two-year-old series with the Group 2 Karakata Plate on the cards over the 1,200 metres. Uh, we've also got the listed old comrade stakes over the Ascot Mile for what looks like an absolutely ripping Saturday of racing over here in the West. So uh, before we get into anything further, as always, we'll have a look back at last week's pod selections. Things didn't start off very well. Our first pick of the day was race four uh, with Buster Bash. Uh, ran seventh thereafter, just being ran, I thought, far too quickly in those middle stages. Didn't appear to get the, the mid-race breather that he had the previous start. And even though he was up in class, I thought he could have done a bit better uh, if it weren't for the muddling tactics. So that was disappointing. Uh, race number five, Lipstick Flickers ran third after lobbing into the box seat. She just looked a little bit one-paced uh, after turning for home, but Probably the last 100 metres, she was doing her best work, but it just took an age to kind of wind up and go through the gears, which uh, was disappointing because another 50 metres, I think she would have had them. So uh, we moved on there to race number six, Shant Hawk, who uh, after the first up effort thought she was really well in here, but could only manage sixth, got back a little bit further than expected. And uh, even though the, the winner came from around a similar spot in the run, I thought she... Didn't finish off as well as well I was expecting and perhaps what she can finish off in anyhow. So uh, disappointing there, but we did get on the board with Alaskan God who took out the Melvista Stakes. Very dominant win from him to make it three on the bounce, I believe. And uh, he landed sort of off midfield and was produced around the 500, just out wide and just powered home. Uh, it was very dominant and he looks uh, all the rage for the Derby uh, next week. So good win from him. Uh, race number eight, Mrs. America, uh, ran fifth there. Don't think the plan was to lead. The horse had never led in her life. Uh, ended up up top, probably by default. Um, so, yeah, did look to give it a kick, though, when turning for home and thought maybe she might give a bit of cheek, but was just overrun. And uh, speaking of which, a huge congratulations to friend of the podcast, Brock Luthwaite, who's now a Group 3 winning trainer. He won that race with Lady Chant. And what a great picture, uh, him embracing uh, Lady Chan after the race. Uh, you can see how much it means to him. Uh, so well done to Brock. And uh, she's a real life chance uh, in the derby. Uh, she's got a fair bit of staying pedigree on the dam side. So, uh, and the, the toughness of War Chan as well should have her uh, well suited and, and in it for a long way. Uh, the day ended, uh, race number nine, count the sessions, ran 10th there. Did lead them up as expected. Not really sure what happened. Watch the replay back. Um, didn't appear to be going too hard in the middle stages, but perhaps the, the upgrade to the good three maybe didn't help. I did notice he had uh, some bandages on the back feet, so that could have played a part, but we'll never know. But look, um, great day's action anyhow, and uh, we'll try and find some winners this Saturday. So a quick look at the track setup for Saturday. At the moment, we're on a good four. And the rail will be at six metres. Uh, there's 10 metres of unused ground from Thursday's meeting that had a 16 metre rail. Uh, but quite strange that they didn't run uh, the Ascot midweek meeting on the Wednesday like they normally do. You know, I would have thought that 24 hours of extra recovery slash prep time would have been super handy and, and very beneficial with such a big meeting on this Saturday. Uh, but we had Pinjarra on the Wednesday and Ascot on the Thursday. So hopefully it doesn't 
affect the surface too much with only two days in between meets. But there's east to northeasterly winds forecast and up to five mil of rain on Saturday. So I'm thinking that we could see another on pace day. But as always, let's keep an eye on those first few races just to see if anything different may be happening or exactly how that track is playing early on. So we'll start off with race number one. It's the West Speed Platinum Autumn Series heat over the 1100. And I thought Like a Jaguar was a really good performance last week and finished off really well. She was third of nine there uh, in this heat over 1,000 metres uh, with the theme of war chants uh, at the moment. She's a war chant mare, settled off midfield in the run there. Uh, before working to the line very nicely, I thought, was around 1.8 lengths behind Snipalicious. She did clock 33.30 last 600 for the race, which was fourth quickest. They did run along, uh, but I thought she was well suited in this assignment for a couple of reasons. Which firstly, gets that extra 100 metres to contend with here. I think which is what she wants uh, after that last start. And races off seven days where she does go particularly well. From four starts, she's won twice and placed once. So that's off seven days. So really interesting statistic there. Chris Parnham sticks on for this. And I think despite drawing out in seven, shouldn't find himself too far off the action in this small field. I think if he's able to keep that leading duo of Lord Lonsdale and Short Talk to within four lengths on the corner, I think they should be getting over the top very late with the turn of foot that they displayed last week. So... Fingers crossed, like a Jaguar can get up here. She's around 440. Quite happy with that price, and uh, hopefully, she can get us off to a flyer. We're going to move on to race number three now. It's the Crown Perth Handicap, three year old, 62 plus over the 1400. Was super impressed with other one's son's first up effort last time out. He was tough as nails there. It was a very narrow second behind Harmika. His son of demerit, he led them up on that occasion with Harmika sat to his outside. Uh, they did then have a ding-dong battle in the straight and Harmika got up by 0.3 of a length. But they gapped the rest of the field. Blue Line ran third uh, and was around five lengths back. Uh, but Blue Line came out and won down at Mount Barker last Thursday or Friday. So uh, form's been franked to an extent. But thought other one's son would have taken plenty of benefit from that hit out. Uh, and as well as that battle over the concluding stages, I think the rise to 1,400 is good. And draws two, so Chrissy Parnham should be able to find the top here where he can control proceedings and look to pinch a few cheap sectionals in the run. Uh, but if that does eventuate, I thought these two could look to kick clear on the corner. And I think they'll be very hard to run down on that five kilo drop in weight off the first up run. Although in this field, he's come up very short. I thought we might get around fours, 450, but He's open 210. So, look, I want to wait. I think he'd get out from that price with quite a few smart ones involved here. So, uh, if we can get closer to threes, I wouldn't be put off by that. And that's probably the minimum I'd want to be getting involved here with other ones done. So, the next one up is race four. It's the listed old comrade stakes over the 1600. Just the six runners doing battle in this year's old comrade, uh, with everyone but Play Marifa coming out of that grandstand cup a fortnight ago. But in terms of early speed, I thought we'd see Bruce Almighty come across and probably get it pretty cheaply uh, up top. He's drawn gate six of six, but that shouldn't be an issue. I think coming around and son of a god probably landing behind with playing Marika also quite handy from the inside alley. Uh, but Dom to shoot and son of Bacchus would be the last pair in running off a of six. So even though he will be likely last in the run, I did think Dom to shoot was getting back to somewhere near his best after a very good win two starts back. That was in a 72-plus mile of this track. Landed just off the pace there uh, before powering home over the final stages to knock off uh, Fashion Queen uh, and Weapon Sun. We then saw Big Butter Boom, who finished lower down the order in that race. He came out and won his next start, so the form's been franked. Uh, and then Dom ran on nicely in the Grandstand Cup, I thought, last time out. Uh, he was travelling last in the run. Uh, but ran fourth, less than three lengths behind Son of a God and gets two kilos off him here. So uh, throwing the extra 100 metres as well, I think he's really well suited. Did run the best last 600 of the race in the grandstand. It was 34.46. And after a couple of different runs um, in terms of where he landed in, in transit, I think Lactar Amelie may have worked him out. So... Uh, two good rides for different reasons, um, but showed versatility, I thought. So that's very important. 
And even if he does land last, I'm pretty confident he's got the turn of foot to reel in those ahead. There's only a field of six. So uh, with that two kilo swing on Son of a God, I think he can be getting over the top here. And at around 320, he was very keen to find out. So we'll head to a quick break now. Don't go away. Hemmed away as Samazdat about to peel to the outside, but he'll need to get going as Misty Lad comes into the turn a length and a half in front. Arctic Stream, dig deep, got bailed up on the inside in a pocket. Trap for Fools runs on Media Baron, then Samazdat. Trap for Fools, Arctic Stream rallies again. Media Baron coming again, looking down the barrel at his second straight old comrade, Media Baron. It's Media Baron, home too good for Trap for Fools. Dig deep, got out of the pocket late. Charging to grab third from Samazdat on the fence. Arctic Stream, who weakened up late back on the inside, Misty Lad, and last home, Juicing Carrots. So, up next, it's race number seven. It's the feature of the day the group two Karakata plate for the two year olds over the 1200 metres. Total prize money for the race is $500,000, with the winner getting 274000 of that. Second, 93,000, and third, 44,000. So there's a plenty of money on offer here. Um, to me, it looks like one of the more exciting additions uh, of Karakata Plate. Uh, all the talk's been centered around Amelia's duel in the lead in uh, with two very dominant wins. Can she win though from gate 17 when probably come into 15 after scratchings? And that's probably the big one here, uh, the big question. If you do like her and you haven't got on yet there, I wouldn't be surprised if that barrier sees her get out to even money or perhaps even $2.20, uh, but dare to dream on that one because uh, I think she will drift a little bit. I think we'll see the early running come from Baby Paris and Fiorucci Mama here with Street Parade, Man Crush and Sweet the Leg all likely to lob in behind. I think from there, Capricorn Man, She's Graceful and Costume Party. Uh, could be next trio with Left the Building, Penny on the Queen and Union Jack, probably fourth line in running which I thought would likely mean that Costa's crown and Playhouse Patron probably land next with Sunny Honey, Lucky Sue, Amelia's Jewel and Galaxy Affair, quite possibly out the back. And as I said earlier, I think if she had drawn a gate, uh, Amelia's Jewel probably jumps $1.50 and wins. But I think gate 17 is not without its issues here. Could it be uh, a good thing for her in the fact that she'll go back, likely land in a three-wide train and at least not be cluttered up uh, on the fence or one off the fence, that could work out in her favour, but just feel like in such a big field, you know, may well have too much to do. So, look, I'm going to have to side with one at Better Valley here, uh, and he'll be up in the pointy end of the field in running. And that's Street Parade here, who comes here off a very close second in that list at Perth Stakes over the 1100 last start. The son of Lucky Street, he was set up on speed there, but was only collared really, really late by. Very impressive left the building. It was pretty agonising if you were on, I thought, but certainly lost no admirers from the efforts and he's yet to miss the top three from his five career starts so far. So he's done plenty right, in my opinion. And seat trainer Russell Stewart come here uh, with this bloke instead of his other runner, swear to God, or in addition to, uh, he's publicly stated last week that he thought swear to God was better than Street Parade. So I think... Reading between the lines a little bit, I think that tells me that he's got all the confidence in the world that this bloke can get the job done. Uh, benefits once again from a really good gate down in two. And Brad Parnham can look to land right behind the speed from there. Uh, like I said, Baby Paris and Fiorucci Mama likely leaders. So he should be able to do pretty much no work in behind and just save him up for that final dash to the line where uh, he'll have track position on many and should be peaking for this as well fitness wise but was really happy to find out at the $11 and three twenty for the place for Street Parade. But it's going to be a cracking race and wouldn't be surprised if something at odds got up here. I and mean, even as good as Amelia's Jewel is, um, yeah, we'll see what happens, but cannot wait. So the final play of the meeting, race number eight, it's the Amelia Park Wines Handicap, 71 plus over the 1,400. And it was nice to see Come to Time get his long-awaited win last time out after three successive second placings to kick off his prep. And this session's five-year-old had encountered a bit of bad luck prior to that run, uh, but to see him sit on the toe ball of Crystal Dane and then put her away was very nice to see. Meets in an almost entirely different field here from the one that he beat three weeks ago, but we do see plenty more early speed in this with the likes of Bombay Style, Patristic, Misty Lad, all rolling forward. 
Uh, also, Saleya, who's drawn very, very wide, will probably also head forward as well, you would have thought. Uh, this should see comes a timeline right in behind, I think, from the eight alley, and Chris Parnham can stalk those leading uh, bunch there up to the corner, I think, then before making a move. Uh, we've also seen the form from his race two back when he was second behind Kenny Lake, Frank by Mood Swings, who won a 66 plus 1200 for his next run before running a huge race just last Saturday in the 78 class. He was very close behind listed winner Bazoom and finished ahead of Watch Me Dance in third. So a good uh, form reference and come to times racing really well. Uh, would be a lot fitter from the effort and has to be the one to beat here. So I was happy to have him on top. And my best of the day at $2.45 for come to time. So WA Watch this week takes us to Randwick, where racing is likely to take place on a heavy track for the Group 1 Doncaster Mile meeting. I've uh, got two WA stars in action in that race, Inspirational Girl and Kiss on All Four Cheeks go around in the feature. And we see one William Pike reunite with the reliable man there that he rode to victory in the 2020 Railway Stakes. She's in with just 51 and a half kilos here and Draws 19, may well come into 16 after scratching, but I think she may well have been one of the main chances for the race, if not for that barrier. Uh, but with Pikey on, anything's possible. And if you are keen, you're getting $17 to find out. So uh, she hasn't been that price for a very long time, uh, if ever. Kiss on all for Cheeks is the other runner here, going beautifully after a dominant win in the Group 3 Shaftesbury Avenue down in Flemington three weeks back. Uh, Mark Zara was on that day, uh, this daughter of Ritten Tycoon, won by two and a quarter there. And I think she's right in this after a pair of Group 1 placings last spring out here in the West, uh, in the railway in Kingston Town. So some good form for her. Uh, hard to believe she's still only a four-year-old. She's done a lot already. Uh, but we get Alicia Collett riding uh, from Seven Alley. So draws pretty nicely in the big field. And she can land around midfield there. And it's $26, so it's a pretty generous price to find out. And hopefully uh, one of these or both can run really big races. But yeah, best of luck to both runners and riders. Hopefully they can snag a result for WA in the Group 1 Doncaster Mile. So that's pretty much all we've got for you this week. If you have been enjoying the content, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, give us a follow over on Twitter at Western underscore mail. On Facebook at TWM Pod. And don't forget the meeting reviews over at the westernmail.wordpress.com. But that's been episode 65 this week. Thanks once again for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now. 800 left to go. Henchard, three quarters of a length in front of move. Coming from the roughy, tell nothing. And so around the outside, tell nothing. Set a light, goes up and headed off. Henchard, outspoken lad. A length away, then Alma Herman. Hear me singing, pale rider. They're followed after a length and a half. Alaskan God. Rockinori's got up on his inside, coming towards the turn. He's trying to force his way through traffic. Down on the rails to Sengo. Bandolier of Bow, Black Fantasy. Tricks of the trader. Day from them at the top of the home straight. Outspoken lad hit the front from Tell Nothing. Henchard comes back behind them. Rockinori still picking his way through them. Alaskan God lets down and he's coming with a big run. Tricks of the trade further back, charging home. Alaskan God hit the front. Tricks of the trade rattling down the outside, but it's Alaskan God. Alaskan God, Derby bound beat Tricks of the trade. Outspoken lad third.